Hey guys, it's Shay again. Um, so today I'm going to be making my second video. And I know in the first video I had said I was talking about like um, me being married and going through a separation, which um, is something that I am going through. And I know I mentioned in that video that I would be talking about that in a different video. But after like thinking about it um, for a couple days, I just kind of decided that that's something that I want to keep private and I just like don't want to answer like any questions or like if people come and ask me like what's going on or what happened I just don't want to talk about it so if you guys um remember the first video just um like just please not ask me about that because I just feel like that's something that's private and I kind of just don't want to share that information but um to continue more about my brain tumor um some of the things that i went through when i was in the hospital i remember when i went to the first hospital and i had to get the shunt in my head and before i had to um i was able to get my brain surgery they had to stick a little camera up like inside to see how much um blood flow they need to cut off so they cut like a little stitch on my stomach it's probably like this big and they stuck a camera in there and it went like all the way up to my brain and so they could look around to see so i have like a scar on my stomach um of course i have the scar back here from when they did my surgery and then of course you guys remember from last time my trach that i had um so that was like one of the things that i had to do like in order like for them to do the surgery and I just remember um, one of the times, like, I was, like, in my room. And I was, like, pretty, like, heavy, like, sedated before my surgery. But, like, I was still able to eat food. And, like, I just had, like, a lot of guests, like, all the time. Like, it got so bad, like, they were kind of just like, okay, this is enough. But um, I had to do that. And then, like, every day they would, like, come check my heart rate and like do tests on me and um I don't know for some reason they used to always come and um you know like when you have diabetes and you have to get like the little shot or they like stick your finger they used to always like come and do that but I've I've never had diabetes so I didn't understand like why they did that and then also because um just because I wasn't like moving around a lot and I stayed in the bed, they gave me these shots in my stomach. They were called blood, blood thinners. And I used to have to get those like every day in my stomach. And like, if you know me, everyone like that knows me, I'm like really small, probably like this big. So when they were doing that, that like really hurt. But I had to do that every day. Um, and then like, after my surgery, they stopped doing like the little prick in my finger. It was just in my stomach. It was insulin. They were giving me insulin too and the blood thinner. Um, I remember um, just like always just having like so many people come. And I remember like the day of my surgery, I was like so scared. Like I was so scared um, the night before I got to have like one last meal and my la my last meal was mickey's mickey's soul food like that's my favorite place to go so um instead of like getting my usual what i always get like the smothered um hamburger patty i decided to get baked chicken and i think i got cabbage and greens and macaroni and so i got that and then the next day i was like so nervous about the surgery i was just, just like felt so sick so I like ended up throwing up like everything because I was just so scared. And like I remember like being rolled to the OR and I remember the last thing like I saw was um my wife and my mom and my mom was like freaking out. So like she was crying and she made me start crying and I was just like, okay, I can't do this right now. And so they put me in the room. They were like trying to make me laugh, like to get me to calm down. And I just remember them telling me just to count down backwards from 10. And they were like, when you get to one, you're going to be asleep. 
And I remember they put this little mask on my face. And after that, like, the rest is history. Like, I don't, I don't know. But, um, <clears throat> my wife told me that my surgery was probably, like, about six or seven hours. And <clears throat> she just said it was just, like, a long time. It just seemed like forever. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I don't know, like... After my surgery, like I said, I had got the trach and everything, and <clears throat> I came back. I remember, too, um, for I think it was about two weeks, I was on a ventilator. I had a ventilator hooked up to me, and I had to, like, show that um, I could breathe on my own because, like, at that time, my lungs were, like, really weak. <clears throat> so I had the ventilator, and I remember I had to, like, I think I had to be... I had to try to like breathe without it or something for like 24 hours <clears throat> for them to fully take me off of it. I don't really remember for sure, but it was just hard because, you know, you see like you watch the news and you see like people being hooked up to that type of stuff. And then it happens to you. It's just scary. So like looking back, <clears throat> if I have a picture, I'm going to post it so you guys can see. But <clears throat> looking back and seeing stuff like that, it's just like. I can't believe this happened to me. And, like, this was the first time I ever went to the hospital. Like, besides, like, me being born, <clears throat> this is, like, the first time I ever had, had to go to the hospital and stay at the hospital. <clears throat> and I remember, like, the first night <clears throat> that I stayed there, I did. I wanted to go home so bad. <clears throat> and every night, I just wanted to go home. Like, I always was like, when am I going home? <clears throat> kind of like a little kid when they're somewhere they don't want to be and they're just like when are we leaving <clears throat> and i remember <clears throat> i left that hospital and i went to like a, a, like a rehab facility and <clears throat> i was really nervous about going there but i was still kind of like okay we can do this and like after a month of like being there i was just like so ready to go home <clears throat> and every week they would come and they would give me like a weekly checkup and say like how I'm progressing or <clears throat> what are things that I need to work on. <clears throat> and it was hard because in when I was at the rehab place, I had ended up getting pneumonia. <clears throat> and I already had pneumonia like in the beginning when I first came to the hospital. But <clears throat> I had pneumonia and then I still had my trait. So... <clears throat> I went like, I think I got an infection there one time, but <clears throat> it was just hard because I was like ready to go. And then <clears throat> they would do little stuff there. Like it would be days like, um, I think it was like on Fridays, I want to say. Sometimes they would bring like zoo animals up there or they would bring like dogs up there just to like cheer the patients up. And then it was just like different because like when I would go for like my physical therapy and seeing other patients like rehabbing and getting better like sometimes I was just thinking like oh my gosh like I'm really blessed because some of them had like they've gone through something worse than what I was going through so I was just kind of like okay well you know you got to get through this and in the beginning it was hard because I was still recovering from the surgery so like sometimes I would do therapy and I would literally like just black out in the middle of therapy but then i would only black out for like 10 seconds and i would wake up and i remember one time this happened and my therapist was like calling my name and i just like opened my eyes but i was laughing because like i didn't even know what was going on and she was like you know you just blacked out right and i was kind of like no and like that happened like a lot of times when i first got there and then like i was on like a lot of different medicines and for the longest, we didn't know, like, why. And then eventually, we figured it out that, like, some of the medicines were affecting me. So I had to end up, like, taking some, like, getting taken off of some of those medicines. But it was just a crazy day, but I met a lot of cool people while I was there. And <clears throat> um, I'm actually, on my next video, I'm going to reveal to you guys something that I'm going to do that I've like never done before and it's something to do with like my brain condition 
<clears throat> and it's something I've been wanting to try, but I've just been like really nervous. And like before I had this surgery, I was like a really outgoing person, but after this, I've been, I'm more like a quiet person and kind of like stay to myself. So <clears throat> in my next video, when I tell you guys about like the, my experience that I'm getting ready to have, I think that a lot of you guys will be inspired by it. Cause I feel like I have this good feeling that it's going to be something good. It's going to be something I'm going to start doing like every month. So just stay tuned for the next video. And if you guys have any questions, just like write them in the comment section or you can <clears throat> find me on Facebook. My Facebook is Renee Broussard and my Instagram is slim, S -I, I mean, S-L-I-M underscore goddess underscore. And if you have any questions, just you can write me on any of those or even here. I check this all the time. Um... But I'm just going to end this video right here and then I will, I'm really excited about making the next video and I hope you guys will watch it.